let me tell you how somebody that I know took less than 30 days to settle a claim with Turo, which was as a result of a guest renting one of the vehicles and basically destroying it. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Car Shares podcast, Car Share YouTube channel, and then Turo host tired of delivering and sending cars and spending a lot of money. Facebook group. So this is a joint story that I'm going to tell. This story involves a guest, a two-row guest renting one of the vehicles and basically was out having a great time. I mean, it was nothing wrong with what happened to him, but um, I just wanted to share this lesson so you guys can know how you can spend less than 30 days uh, selling a claim with Turo. Uh, if you ever find yourself in a situation like this, again, what I'm gonna need you to do is take some uh, copious notes uh, about the process and how uh, it was resolved, okay? Because I think this is gonna help a lot of folks. Just working on your vehicle, looking over your car, and did find you do have a, a hole in your oil pan, and also your oil level sensor is broken. And as you can see here, your subframe is touching your control arm, as opposed to this side, that does have a gap. Okay, I'm back. So well, the story I was going to tell you was the Turo claims process. So basically, Turo's term of service determines what levels of support or expanded or expenses that you get reimbursed by the claim department. So the first thing that happened was as soon as the accident happens, I was sent a notification by Turo uh, saying that the guest who was on an approved Turo trip had actually damaged the vehicle. So it began the long audios process to figure out exactly how to make sure the claim is not only uh, efficient but also to make sure that things are settled in the right manner so back to the story so basically after I got that notification it was supposed to be uh, two three hours prior to the guests uh, returning the vehicle and I got that notification about two o'clock in the morning all right did not hear back from the guests uh, till about 10 o'clock so that's you know eight hours later uh, the bottom line is after that information was relayed to Turo and I re reached out to the guest to try to inquire about where the vehicle was it was very difficult to actually understand what the next steps were gonna be if you know what I mean the reason I say that is sometimes it doesn't feel like it's apparent So, wow. 
welcome back. I know you finished reading the terms of service, your two row terms of service. So I'd like to point something out to you. Within your two row terms of service, you could use an exemption where you are not allowed to provide a photo. In other words, if your vehicle was damaged and Turo is asking you to provide photos, but it so happens that you don't have access to the photos because, for example, in my situation, your vehicle is actually, uh, it was impounded by the by the police to an impound lot and so you don't have access to the vehicle. It could be even more worrisome when you don't know exactly what impound lot your vehicle is at. That makes the situation not just stressful, but it also conflicts with you trying to solve a problem, right? Trying to solve a problem, trying to get your car back so you can then get your car back in service. You know, you can settle this claim, right? So it behooves you to try to contact the guests as soon as you are aware that something is wrong with your vehicle. Now, on the flip side, the guests were supposed to contact me. The guests did not contact me. The guests thought in their mind that they could settle it through a different process, but that's not exactly what ended up happening. So can you guess what the guests did wrong in this situation? Go ahead and leave a comment somewhere in, in the, the comment uh, on the chat. Let me tell me what you think the guest did wrong or what the guest could have done better. All right. But in, in a nutshell, the guest should have used the uh, the inspection report, not just inspection report, but the accident, the incident report. Okay. So. Turo has all these tools for a reason, and I shared that with the guests. I'm like, look, you need to fill this out. But the guests had already w gone too far down the rabbit hole, had already taken your ve the vehicle and sent it somewhere where it wasn't supposed to be sent. So now you have a situation where you're looking for your vehicle. I'm looking for my vehicle. It could apply to you. And you don't know where your vehicle is, right? That is not a good look. That's not a good way to kind of take care of stuff that you're trying to take care of. But anyway, so to cut a start, long story short, after I was told about exactly what was going on and where the vehicle was, I ended up in a situation where I had to expeditiously act to find out where my vehicle was, right? So I reached out to the impound lot. And this is another tip that I'm going to share with you. So get a notebook and write this down. You know how a lot of you folks say, oh, I'm going to register my vehicle and my business name or this and this and that. Just so you know, before you can get your vehicle that's registered in your business name out of an impound lot, you have to prove that you actually own this vehicle. In other words, if you're the company, you have to prove that it's your vehicle and not only you have to prove this is your vehicle you have to also find a way to tell those folks that uh, you are the ceo or you're the owner you may have to write them a letter using your business letterhead you understand so if you find yourself in this situation that's what you got to do okay so that's the other tip now let me tell you what the the guest did not do right the guest should have used the incident contact report uh, to fill out the paperwork and they should have contacted me the host as soon as something was wrong with that vehicle they did not do that so try to coach your get your guests as they uh get your vehicle sign out coach them so it, it should be a situation where they're not uh messing up your 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 money because again it's money the more time that you're not on the street um with your vehicles and people not renting it out it also means that you have a situation where you may have to pay a lot of money. Uh, you're losing lost revenue. So that's another thing, too, that Turo would have to cover for you, the lost revenue. All right. Not sure if, uh, if there's a difference between you losing money, claiming for lost revenue, or if the entire claim itself can include lost revenue. So I'm going to more details on that. I'm going to break down exactly what the claim uh, came out to be. Okay. But so... That's, I'm gonna go back to the third tip. The third tip I'm gonna try to get you to do is the tow companies, okay? The tow companies. I've told you guys about how sometimes it's not what you think it is, sometimes it's what you think you know. In other words, you may think you know something, but you don't exactly know exactly what it is that you think you know, but 
I'll let you guys know right now the biggest thing I've learned about the tow companies is you got to be very very careful when it comes to thinking that just because you call roadside assistance through Turo that you're gonna get a company that's actually run by Turo the same also applies if you're calling for roadside assistance with your stuff it may not be what you think it is